Hello and welcome back uh, to our online patient meeting. It's uh, 6 p.m. UK time, therefore it is time to start our online patient meeting. We are back with Dr. Yon. Hi, Dr. Yon. You can hear Hello. me, I believe. Hi, yes. good to have you Perfect. back. And so some of you probably know we had a bit of a, a technical issues last time, so we were able to reschedule. So we are back. Uh, we are going to uh, discuss uh, the same topic, of course, as the la as we were supposed to last time. And just simply let me remind you a bit on how everything works. So uh, basically, we will start with uh, the most common questions uh, that we receive many times from the patients. And then it will be your time for your questions. So all you need to do is just type it in in the chat section. And of course, this is all possible, all those events, live events that we have prepared for you and we are still working on preparing them for you. Um, this is all because of Stronger Together initiative. We want to make sure that since we are not able to, you are not able to proceed with your um treatments, we just want to make sure you can get ready, you can ask your questions to the top uh, IV experts and just uh, hopefully uh, wait until uh, it will be still uh, again possible and uh, it is all possible thanks to our ambassadors and partners you can see all of them right here on the screen and so I'm not going to name all of them simply because this, there are so many of those uh, but um, tomorrow, uh, sorry, tonight you actually will have a chance to also meet uh, Joanne, for example, and Sandra, and they will be here with us. Uh, so um, you will have a chance to also meet some of the pa uh, partners and some ambassadors. And as I've mentioned, um, Dr. Yon already is with us, and he is from IVF Spain, which is located in Alicante in Spain. He is the co-founder and president of IVF Spain as well. And tonight he will uh, discuss a very important topic, implantation failure and egg donation. And of course, um, well, that would be it from me. From me at this point, Dr. Jan, are you ready to begin? Perfect. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so this, this topic uh, is uh, described as implantation failure and egg donation which uh, maybe doesn't mean the same as implantation failure in egg donation. So I will try to give a global picture of implantation failure and then try to adapt uh, uh, special uh, topics to the egg donation situation. Okay. So uh, we could go ahead with the first <clears throat> question, if you like, uh, Caroline. Yes, of course, let's go ahead with the very first uh, question here. Is there a relationship between implantation failure and advanced age in egg donation treatment? <clears throat> okay, first I would like to comment just uh, shortly um, about the most common reasons for implantation failure. <clears throat> and this is, uh, please, please remind it uh, always during mm, the whole uh, uh, presentation, uh, it's uh, in 70 to 80 percent of uh, cases uh, a failure of the embryo. Yeah, uh, implantation failure uh, uh, describes the relationship between uh, uh, embryo and the uh, uterine environment, and uh, the the there has to be to, to get established a kind of dialogue between both, and the first input always goes out from the embryo. So a uh, metabolically and genetically competent em embryo is uh, 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 able to start this uh, conversation and then the uter uterus, the endometrium uh, usually only reacts. Yeah, there, uh, it is known that about uh, 500 molecular signs, uh, signals are uh, getting exchanged during the first phase of implantation. But uh, this means also that 20 to 30% of cases of implantation failure, we can find the reason in the uterine environment. What does this mean for egg donation uh, patients specifically? Egg donation patients are, uh, from the point of view of the embryo quality, uh, better shaped than uh, normal IVF patients that have to handle with the uh, with the decreasing quality of their eggs, uh, with the increasing age, with the increased aneuploidy and genetic uh, uh, 
these balances of their embryos. So the most uh, uh, critical part uh, for implantation, this is the embryo quality, is usually given in uh, the egg donation cycles in a way that uh, uh, is the best possible in nature. So uh, this is how we also uh, could learn over the past uh, years and decades uh, uh, about the uterine factors that, uh, uh, as mentioned, provide 20 to 30% of the implantation failures, but are very easy to study in an egg donation population, because if we can count with 80% of the of the egg uh, quality already given, uh, then uh, we have uh, much uh, uh, more uh, resources to detect uh, uh, small differences in a lot of factors that influence uterine environment. And uh, just to mention a, 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 a couple of them, uh, we will we will uh, discuss more in detail during the next uh, questions. Uh, the first uh, uh, thing is uh, uh, in order uh, for an embryo to implant, uh, uh, this is a critical time between being uh, 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 getting nutrients from, from just the media where they uh, grew up uh, during uh, the IVF treatment or, or even in nature the same, to uh, get implant means to get blood flow. This means to be able to, to pass uh, this critical time uh, between transfer and implantation, uh, getting nutrients just from the environment and to assure how to provide themselves uh, blood flow enough that will bring nutrients later, that will allow later to make the placenta and to establish the switch uh, 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 organ uh, that uh, will assure the further growth and the and the supply of nutrients. So this is why blood flow is very uh, important, and we will see in implantation failure cases usually the blood flow is diminished. This can happen, for example, if there is a chronic infection like endometritis, if there is a disease like adenomyosis, which uh, means there is a chronic uh, also inflammation around the subendometrium. Uh, also in cases of uh, congenital anatomic uh, uh, failures like uh, subseptus or myomas that interfere in the blood supply of the uh, endometrium. So there could be organic, uh, uh, physical, let's say anatomical reasons, but uh, most of the cases are a little bit more, more uh, 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 depending on hormones, depending on uh, genetics, and depending on immunology. We have to understand that uh, 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 a fetus, an embryo, is a foreign body for, for the mother that uh, has to uh, implant this uh, uh, embryo. And, uh, Nature obviously has foreseen that, and there is a special condition during pregnancy that is called immune tolerance, where all the machinery uh, to fight against intruder, intruders, uh, to fight against uh, possible foreign bodies, and to fight against uh, genetic instances that are different from their uh, own one, uh, uh, gets uh, 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 run down. Uh, this uh, immune tolerance means that uh, in the endometrium there is a special condition that allows a foreign body to, to be accepted and to be implanted. And this is a very uh, uh, suitable uh, and, and very sensible uh, balance that uh, easily can get uh, distors in distortions. And um, uh, if the embryo uh, is able uh, to start this, this dialogue with the, with the uh, endometrium, the, the most critical thing the endometrium has to do is uh, to manage the immunology uh, around, to manage the uh, hormonal uh, inputs that uh, will uh, allow the embryo to implant only to a certain time, yeah, after 24, 36 hours, this window of implantation gets closed and then uh, the chance for, for a successful implantation disappears. And, uh, and at the end also, it's an immunological uh, issue. Uh, so uh, 
in egg donation, what we find is usually patients with a higher age than in normal IVF. And all these uh, qualities, immunology, for example, autoimmune diseases will increase with age. So uh, patients for egg donation are more uh, uh, prone to have such kind of uh, problems. Endometritis, uh, for example, the same. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, in terms of the displacement of the window of implantation, so the hormonal response of the endometrium, there are some uh, slower activity in women uh, beyond certain age, age, I would say uh, around 40 or, or, or older, where um, then the synchronization between embryo and uh, endometrium may fail. And these are all conditions, despite the anatomy, which is congenital and uh, applies for everybody that has it, uh, but all other three uh, have a, a higher incidence with increasing age. And this is why it is so critical for uh, uh, egg donation patients uh, uh, to be aware of those risks and to, to adapt protocols to that special situation. Perfect. Thank you so much for providing all the details. And of course, there will be um, quite, um, you already have mentioned that, but so, so what are most common reasons for implantation failure? If you could add anything to this? Yeah, okay. This was like my introduction answer. So, but it's okay to, to remind it again because it's uh, so like the most so, important so, point. So, so relevant. Huh? 70 to 80 percent, it's about the embryo. Uh, the embryo quality depends uh, uh, in 75 to 80 percent on the egg quality and only in, in a smaller uh, part uh, from, from the sperm quality. But uh, take home message is embryo quality uh, uh, counts with uh, 70 to 80 percent on the implantation success. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, the embryo and the age of, of the egg are closely related. We will come later to, to speak more in detail about that. And uh, in the rest, 20 to 30% of uh, cases, it is the uterine environment, as we mentioned, blood flow, uh, immunology, and uh, the uh, receptivity, the, the hormonal receptivity of the tissues to adapt to the window of implantation. This is the take home message. Perfect. Thank you for that take home message for sure. It's uh, very, very useful. And uh, let's get to the next question. So is PGT a reasonable in egg donation cycle? Is it really worth to spend money on PGS from medical and financial point of view? Okay, just as introduction, PGTA or former times called uh, PGS, uh, pre-implantation genetic screening, is the technology that uh, can assess the genetic uh, chromosomic formula of embryos before transferring them. This is extremely useful in a woman beyond 35 uh, uh, that, uh, that want a pregnancy with their own eggs up to 43, 44. Uh, it's a, it's a, a really strong instrument that ha uh, has helped uh, uh, thousands of patients in improving their chances. Yeah. Um, having said that, this, does this really uh, apply also for, for egg donation patients where the donor is quite young? Uh, this question is uh, much more uh, uh, interesting because there is no uh, clear uh, evidence so far that there would be more benefits than, than disadvantages from medical and also from the financial point of view. But I would like to, to highlight a little bit our experience on that and uh, based uh, on uh, transmitting facts. What we know is that uh, uh, human eggs are uh, very uh, unstable genetically uh, and also in a very young uh, uh, woman like donors, with uh, high fertility potential, like donors, uh, there is a, a, a capability of generating uh, abnormal, genetically abnormal embryos in a, in a way uh, that uh, from a full cord of a cycle, if we test all the blastocysts that uh, the best donor of the world uh, could uh, generate 
being uh, 25 years old, at least 25% of them would carry some kind of uh, genetic disbalance, which is a lot. This means the mistakes in uh, aligning properly the, the uh, chromosomes is in humans uh, uh, very uh, uh, prone to, to mistakes. And obviously later on, beyond 30 or 35, this could be 50% of all the embryos. Near, near 40, this could be 80% of all the embryos. And uh, 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 close to 43, this could be 90 or even 100% of all the embryos. Obviously, this uh, accumulation of mistakes get worse with age. But this also applies for very young donors. And uh, uh, if we take into account that 25% of them uh, will carry some kind of chromosomic disbalance, then you can, you can uh, take it uh, as uh, an evidence that from four blastocysts, one will never give you uh, a healthy newborn. So and this one will even have the potential to frustrate you because they will never implant this is what uh, uh, most commonly happens if an embryo is an euploid. It uh, does not implant. This is why I mentioned before the genetic uh, factor of the embryo. Uh, and uh, if they implant, you, uh, the, the chances to, to, to uh, lose this pregnancy are extremely high. So the second group will get lost through early miscarriages. And only very few of uh, all the chromosomic formulas that are thinkable will survive, yeah, like uh, Down syndrome or others. So this is very unlikely to, to happen because most of them even do, do not implant. But uh, we have to, to also consider in terms of the uh, expectations of the time invested on, of, on the psychology of uh, our patients, if it is worthy to transfer embryos blindly, uh, having access to the technology of uh, 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 testing them before transfer. Because this way, we could first shorten the time to pregnancy. We could avoid unnecessary implantation failures and frustrations and time and uh, resources that get lost thereby. We could also uh, avoid in a certain way, uh, uh, the miscarriages uh, from 15% to 5%, which is uh, uh, a lot, uh, with all the suffering which uh, uh, goes behind that. Uh, sometimes you need then a, a, a curettage and complications can arise from, from all this. So we have to, 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 to evaluate uh, the, the possibility of uh, performing PGS also on uh, embryos coming from, from uh, donated eggs uh, just in terms uh, of uh, opportunity and chance. And uh, if you just take from the financial uh, point of view the costs of, uh, of a prior transfer, yeah, that is usually uh, around 1,000 to 2,000 euros, plus the medication, plus the time, plus uh, the frustration potential, and so on. Uh, then uh, uh, applying PGS uh, could be reasonable for everybody, as long as the price for PGS is not as high as uh, three or 4,000 uh, euros, which, is, which are the current uh, prices. We in our clinic are now uh, investigating uh, since a couple of years, on a methodology that will uh, lower the cost of the of the per embryo of the uh, PGS uh, universally to to one fifth of the normal cost, and then when it gets affordable, then it makes absolutely sense. And we hope we can offer this uh, soon. Yeah, maybe by the end of uh, of this year. Uh, and. Uh, we think this will be like a revolution in uh, in medicine because uh, we could even uh, make them PGS for free and test all embryos. And then we would turn the situation that is now that we have to justify why we are doing PGS. Then the, the, the question will be com completely inversed. And then 
we should think about how to justify not to do that. Yeah, if the cost factor is uh, no longer there, uh, there are only benefits in doing so. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Definitely interesting what you have said about uh, such plans. Uh, so we we hoping we will be able to actually see it <laughs> soon as well. So please explain the concept behind window implantation. How does the receptivity test work? Yeah, uh, window of implantation. I've I have uh, mentioned it uh, uh, short before. So nature foresees that uh, from both sides, yeah, from the side of the embryo and from the side of the of the endometrium, that uh, uh, the dialogue for the implantation has to happen under certain circumstances that are not uh, uh, that cannot be prolonged in time. So for the embryo, this means once it has reached the blastocyst st stage and uh, and uh, it has um, uh, 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 extruded uh, from the from the uh, sona pellucida which protects the embryo in the cellular stage once once uh, uh, it has hatched out uh, then an embryo can only survive around 24 hours without getting implanted and the same happens in this on the side of the of the endometrium. Once uh, the endometrium uh, grows and prepares this kind of bed, and it gets transformed by the progesterone, which is a, a hormonal signal given by the by the uh, uh, ovulating uh, ovary, which transforms the endometrium and makes it suitable uh, to to implant an embryo. Uh, this uh, uh, also happens only under certain circumstances and even after after certain hormonal inputs and triggers that last only for a certain time. Uh, the window of implantation uh, that gets open from the site of the, of the endometrium is just 36 hours open. This means if an embryo arrives earlier uh, in, in a stage of being hatched uh, and uh, starts uh, sending the, the, the signals of the dialogue in an uh, uh, endometrium that has not already opened the window. This means that has not turned on the radio to listen to this uh, 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 input of the uh, embryo, then it will never implant. And the same happens if an embryo comes too late to the uh, endometrium and then starts the dialogue when the uh, window, when the, when the turn on of the radio is already closed, it will never implant. And you can try it, try it thousand times with the best embryos of the world, just the displacement of the uh, synchronization of times between embryo and uh, endometrium will lead to a failure of implantation always. So there is not a, a, gra a, a gradual diminishing. No, this is like a hundred or zero. This is like black or white. Once you miss the window of implantation, the chances for implantation are zero. And this is why uh, we have learned that uh, ex uh, in precisely in the, in, in the group of patients of egg donation where the average age is a little bit higher, uh, the reactiveness of the endometrium to the drugs may be a little bit delayed. And if we find a displaced uh, a window of implantation of 10 to 15% in younger women, in older women, uh, uh, 40 or beyond, we find it uh, in 20 to 30% of cases. And this is something that uh, exactly in a substituted cycle where we can manage the drugs precisely, this is a, a pity to miss uh, the knowledge about the uh, uh, individual uh, exact uh, uh, time frame for the implantation that the woman has. Uh, because if we know that, we can adapt all the times of the transfer and the drugs in a way that embryo and endometrium meet at the right time and not before and not uh, later. And this is uh, how it works, and this is why it is so relevant, and uh, uh, and why this 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 is also uh, uh, a new diagnostics and a new therapeutic approach 
uh, uh, from which especially uh, women uh, being treated with uh, egg donation can uh, take a lot of advantages because at the end this can contribute to an increasing of the implantation success uh, which is uh, statistically significant perfect thank you so much again for the explanation and providing such details and explaining in such a easy way for sure for us to understand thank you so much um okay so would you recommend your ER map uh, test for um everybody ear map is one of the receptivity tests uh, that are in the in the market this is the one that we have developed and obviously the one we we prefer but there are others uh, uh, if we would recommend it to to everybody we are working yeah on 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 generating um financial and uh, uh social medical models uh to explore if uh, if it's uh, really beneficial for everybody or for a whole population if we would uh, implement the the receptivity test for everybody at the beginning of the treatment so for for that formula you need first to know how how expensive the test is yeah that uh, we really can uh, 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 take advantages uh, 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 from it, uh, it's already proven. But if applied to everybody, there is there is a socioeconomic impact uh, in terms of improving the chances for everybody in a reasonable way, avoiding uh, costs of, because uh, 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 a transfer that uh, does not implant is obviously a catastrophic situation because to generate an embryo is uh, extremely uh, costful. Uh, all the time and the efforts uh, invested to that, uh, uh, it's not worthy to 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 get lo to be lost just by such final small detail. And uh, if we take into account that uh, even 10% of transfers would not implant uh, just for reasons like missing the window of implantation. The cost that this has, if we take 1,000 patients, is extremely high compared to the cost of performing these 1,000 tests in advance for everybody, which is also not uh, low. And uh, uh, we, we are at the moment at, uh, at uh, exploring this. Uh, there is no evidence the test should be a little bit cheaper in order to to fulfill these requirements that uh, uh, being applied universally, uh, there is uh, a gain for everybody. Uh, but, uh, okay, this is a, 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 a more public uh, medical approach. If we, if we speak from individuals, from persons that uh, look for, for, for a pregnancy with egg donation, I would recommend it to everybody before because most of those patients already have had uh, treatments before, already have had implantation failures that never could get uh, uh, analyzed and, and, and fixed uh, properly. And they belong to the group that uh, uh, really has much more chances of uh, finding a displaced window of implantation and then go for a treatment that costs uh, 5,000 or 10,000 euros. Uh, uh, blindly, without knowing if you belong to to the to the uh, delayed uh, or or anticipated uh, window of implantation, is uh, in, in my opinion a mistake. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, okay. and for now we are we are just uh, recommending it in cases of egg donation for those patients that had two failed implantations before, which are most of them. Yeah. But we are very close to, to implement it for everybody universally once the, the price could get a little bit lower. And uh, in a second step, this would apply for everybody in all clinics, also with own eggs and also in public services, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that uh, opinion as well. Thank you so much. Um, next question is, can you assess and correct immunologic problems in the uterus? Okay. There are a 
couple of, of uh, indicators if uh, there is something uh, wrong with the immunology. Uh, First, the, the so-called uh, uh, atopic state. So there are there are people that are very very prone to to allergies. So this this there are people that are very prone to autoimmune diseases. Uh, all these disbalances of the immunological system have also an implication in the uh, uterus and in the implantation for embryos, as we mentioned before. Uh, the the way to, to screen patients for autoimmune diseases is easy. You can take blood and you can test a, a lot of uh, factors, of usually antibodies against uh, nuclear proteins or against uh, mit mitochondrial uh, proteins or against uh, some enzymes that are uh, involved in the thyroid function. So there are a lot of already detected uh, 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 immune states that uh, belong to the group of autoimmune diseases that uh, uh, definitely interfere with the implantation. There are some drugs that uh, uh, are used against that. Yeah, we can we can mention them shortly. So this is uh, immune modulators. Uh, there is there are immune globulins. There, there are uh, intralipids or uh, uh, similar enhancers of the uh, autologous immune globulin production. Uh, there are some monoclonal antibodies that can uh, block uh, certain cells uh, of producing, of being too aggressive. Uh, uh, this is a complete uh, white world, yeah, of uh, of uh, immune modulators that I have to admit there is not so much uh, clinical evidence or large studies that would uh, support that. Uh, most of them are uh, just tentative uh, and, and, uh, and, and some of them are, are even with, uh, with a, a, a more uh, uh, an indication uh, uh, in clinical studies. Yeah, but um, having said that, uh, beyond the blood tests, what is much more important for us in terms of uh, uh, implantation and uh, pregnancy is what happens uh, not only in the whole body that could be an indicator that something is wrong also in the uterus, we can also look what is happening inside the uterus itself. And uh, the way to, to assess that is uh, taking a biopsy of the endometrium and uh, uh, we offer this as a, a immunologic mapping. And then, but, but there are other te technologies like flow cytometry. And then in this tissue, select those immune cells that are known to be present and to modulate this uh, immune tolerance that we mentioned before. And then to check if uh, some of the more aggressive uh, cells are overrepresented, some of the uh, uh, supportive cells are underrepresented and find out uh, what is wrong in this balance of forces. And this can be done uh, with the IMAP testing. And then also we can apply conclusions of the immune modulatory drugs uh, for very specific uh, constellations uh, of these disbalances. And having said that, there is another uh, aspect which is also interesting in uh, egg donation cases. You have to understand that an embryo in nature uh, is half of the genetic charge comes from the egg. And as long as it is an uh, 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 homologous uh, uh, treatment, so this half of the genetic charge of the embryo belongs to the mother in which we called uh, we call hemiallogenic because the father is always a foreign person in terms of immunology and rejection for the woman uh, but the embryo is he only hemiallogenic in uh, terms of egg donation as well the genetic charge of the father is foreign uh, as the uh, genetic charge of the donor which means this is a complete halogenic uh, uh, building or genetic structure, which in originally we think and we know that helps the implantation because uh, 
then the immune system and the immune tolerance works better. This is why uh, uh, a cycle of egg donation would have a little bit better success in another woman than uh, if these embryos are transferred to the same donor. Yeah, this is something very, very interesting to, to know. So uh, nature uh, supports diversity. Yeah, the, the egg donation process is nothing anti-natural. Yeah, it, it even uh, gets recognized in the way that the success is a little bit better. But uh, as both parts of uh, the genetic charts of the embryo are foreign, uh, there are some uh, groups of proteins that belong to the histocompatibility complex or HLA antigens that define uh, our immunologic uh, singularity that may be not uh, uh, right aligned. And this generates, for example, that some cells create uh, uh, KIR mediators. These are molecules that uh, then are able to uh, activate very aggressive immune cells. And then at the end, we have through uh, non-compatibility of uh, histocompatibility uh, uh, complex uh, molecules, we have a higher risk of implantation failure uh, in those women. And this is something we can correct nowadays, uh, testing for the KIR HLA of the woman, of the husband and of the donor. This is what we call uh, immunologic matching. And then we can decrease this risk. We cannot make it disappear, but we can decrease this extra risk of the allogenic uh, situation to the normal risk of the hemiallogenic uh, situation and the immunologic rejection put back to the levels of uh, normal uh, spontaneous pregnancy. Perfect. Thank you so much again for all the details you have provided on that question. Let's go to the next one. So what about chronic endometriosis? Is it common? Should everybody perform microbiologic cultures or anything else? Yeah, endometritis is like the Cinderella of the, uh, uh, it's underestimated. Um, there this has, has been studies, uh, end of the 90s, uh, very big studies uh, dri driven from Switzerland um, in thousands of, uh, of patients where uh, it could be shown that uh, in implantation failure, up to 10 to 15% of uh, those patients had some kind of non-physiological microbiological agent uh, inside the uterus. Uh, most of the infections of, of the uterus uh, are acute and can be treated and disappear, but some of them get chronic. And this is really a problem. Uh, one of the clinical signs for that, so it may be related to no pain, nothing. Some of the of the data related to that is thin endometrium, for example. So this inflammated and uh, infected uh, tissue does not react properly to the hormones, does not grow properly. And uh, at least at that point, or, or even better uh, for everybody that uh, gets uh, a biopsy of the endometrium, it should be tested if there are signs of endometritis. And there is a way to do that. Uh, this is uh, uh, two steps. First, you have to culture the, the, the biopsy in the normal culture media. This takes a couple of days until some colonies of certain pathogens may grow and then you can detect them and they, you can uh, test them with antibiotics and have the complete antibiogram which drug will help to eliminate them. But uh, more than half of the infections, of the chronic infections, are due to other kind of uh, uh, parasites that uh, that uh, do not grow in uh, under normal culture conditions because they live inside the cells. And therefore, you need uh, uh, an anatomic pathologist that take a look uh, to, to this tissue and, uh, and uh, 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 evaluates if there are so-called plasma cellular complex cells. These are 
uh, cells uh, uh, inside the, the tissue that uh, recognize that uh, the normal uh, endometrial cells are infected intracellularly through uh, pathogens like uh, uroplasma and uh, mycoplasma and others that do not show up in a culture. And therefore, there are also specific antibiotic prophylaxis. You would need to take that for, for a couple of weeks, and then the problem is over. But this is a, a quite underestimated risk that uh, regularly gets not checked in most clinics. so much again for uh, all the details and now this is the question is a thin endometrium related to a lower implantation potential uh, yes and no yeah i have uh, mentioned uh, just before that an endometritis is associated with thin endometrium i have mentioned very at the beginning that uh, 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 impaired blood flow is uh, also uh, uh, related to, to, to implantation failure and also to a thin endometrium because the endometrium will grow as long as hormonal uh, uh, triggers can arrive. If there is a, a, a restricted blood supply, then uh, it will not grow properly. But at the end, uh, it is not the, the thickness of the endometrium what makes uh, the difference. The thickness of the endometrium is just a symptom. And uh, big studies of hundreds of thousands of patients where uh, physicians tried to correlate the thickness of the endometrium to the success of the transfer did show nothing. They couldn't relate, correlate these two parameters uh, uh, in a credible way. So it is not the thickness of, of the endometrium. You can find uh, uh, pregnancies in endometriums that are uh, five uh, millimeters. You can find uh, those also in endometriums that are 15 uh, millimeters. Uh, where is the optimum? The optimum is not related to the thickness. Obviously, very low endometriums could be related to Usherman, to chronic infections and things like that that you have to solve before. And very thick endometriums could be related to hyperplasias or even to cancer. You have also to clear before. But in the normal range, it is uh, absolutely uh, unrelated if the endometrium is 7 or 14. It's, it's, it's really uh, irrelevant. What really makes the difference is the blood flow uh, subendometrially, this means beyond the endometrium. Uh, that's, that this is something that we can measure with special ultrasounds, uh, and the and the parameter that uh, high, highest uh, with the highest uh, correlation to pregnancy success is the so-called uh, VFI uh, vascular flow index. Uh, to measure that, you need a three-dimensional uh, power Doppler, which measures, let's say, the density and blood flow of small vessels in a certain volume of endometrium. And if this uh, uh, value is below a certain level, then uh, it, uh, the correlation with implantation failure is extremely. How can you correct that? Obviously, first eliminating infections, uh, Asherman's, and other problems. Are there drugs that could increase the blood flow inside the uterus? There are some drugs, yeah, like uh, uh, that that are used in uh, cardiovascular medicine for 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 decades. So uh, there is also uh, uh, Viagra and other other uh, uh, drugs that have shown uh, to 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 increase a little bit this this flow. And there are uh, also other, other uh, uh, attempts with regenerative medicine or installation of growth factors be behind the uterus uh, 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 or the, the endometrium uh, that would increase this blood flow. So thin endometrium, uh, to, to as conclusion, is only a, a symptom, is not the reason for lower implantation 
but uh, knowing this and uh, fixing on the blood flow, there are also uh, uh, ways to improve the blood flow, then the, the endometrium thickness would improve and to restore the implantation potential. Perfect. Thank you so much again for answering that question in detail once more. And now it is our last question when it comes to those most common ones. And of course, then we will move on to your questions. And the question is, regeneration of the endometrium, how does an autologous sub endometrial installation with growth factors work? What are the indications? Yeah. So the indications are uh, recurrent uh, implantation failure. The indications are, like I mentioned before, Asherman syndrome. This is a completely devastated endometrium, which lost the capability of, of regenerate new cell layers. Uh, and these are the original indications. We have worked uh, with uh, such indications, restoring the capability of getting pregnant of Asherman patients in a way that they could achieve 80% uh, of pregnancy rates after that treatment. So it's amazing that the potential of the, of the re regenerative medicine on the endometrium is amazing. We started with those very, very difficult cases where, where, where patients were close to, to go to surrogacy because it was impossible to create a, a, a suitable endometrium on them. And there, the regenerative medicine showed that it can restore, in most cases, normality, which is amazing news. But, but later, we have uh, included other indications uh, that could profit from, from this approach. And this is the low blood uh, supply, for example, as I mentioned before, and also immunologic disbalances. And uh, maybe the same happens also for uh, hormonal uh, displacements because there is an endocrine. This means hormones of the patients have an effect on, uh, on a certain tissue. And this, uh, there is also a paracrine. This means cells of the surra surrounding has also an effect on, uh, on uh, uh, glands and, uh, and, uh, and tissues for the uh, embryo receptivity. Um, at the end, what is uh, happening uh, exactly when we transfer uh, to the uh, subendometrium with a needle uh, concentrate of our own blood one growth factors inside the, the uterus, what, what kind of uh, display of all these effects of increasing uh, blood flow, of uh, modulating immuno immunology, and of increasing the paracrine uh, uh, growth adaptation uh, weights, this is uh, still under investigation, but the fact is that it seems to work. So the indications now are only uh, chronic infections and uh, Asherman, but we are expanding them to immunologic uh, implantation failure. And uh, we think this is the future. Perfect. Thanks so much again for all the questions uh, and to your answers uh, right now. We will move on to your questions. There are plenty of questions ready. So let's uh, get to it right now. So here's the first question. I have had two fat egg donation transfer and several tests. What would you suggest I do for my next transfer? Still try. Yeah, two failed egg donation transfers uh, uh, is per definition. Yeah, uh, I mentioned before two or more failed uh, transfers of good uh, quality embryos. I suppose uh, in an egg donation uh, treatment that the embryos were of uh, good quality. So by definition, um, this patient is uh, unfortunately uh, in the group of implantation failure. And once we have diagnosed uh, her as uh, implantation failure, then she should first look for the possible reasons make an endometrial biopsy with a receptivity testing, make an endometrial biopsy with an immunological testing, and make an endometrial biopsy with uh, uh, chronic endometritis testing. 
the good news is you can do all three in one step yeah so but uh, first i would try to diagnose if the failure is in the implantation fa uh, window if the failure is in the in a chronic infection or if the failure um, is in the immunologic disbalance because knowing that uh, all three issues have different approaches and uh, once this is cleared and one all all the measures can can uh, be implied to counter rest this uh, try again this will work perfect thank you so much for your um advice on that as well and let's get to the next question how is your experience with prednisolone and hashimoto patient regarding transfer and implantation right miscarriage right or do you have other methods to avoid implantation failures and miscarriages um hashimoto and um some autoimmune disease, yeah, uh, where where there are two main um, antibodies that uh, are created by the immune system against the own thyroid glands, and by the way, they also uh, uh, attack the the endometrial uh, tissue, so that uh, the implantation is uh, heavily impaired. Uh, so far, yeah, as monoclonal antibodies are not ready or things like that that could block uh, this specific interaction, the only way we know to counterrest uh, these high levels of uh, anti-TPO and anti-TG is uh, prednisolone and uh, high doses prednisolone in a way that, uh, that uh, you could get uh, uh, severe... Uh, uh, adverse uh, uh, effects from that, but it is the only way to to keep uh, the risk of implantation failure and the higher risk of miscarriage lay, uh, rate as low as possible. Uh, other methods to avoid implantation. So there is no uh, evidence and no clinical study, to my knowledge, right now, if uh, regenerative medicine could. Uh, uh, um, help to 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 improve that situation specifically in the in the endometrium. It uh, from 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 the intellectual point of view, it uh, it could be reasonable, but there is no clinical uh, experience with that. so much again for um answering this uh, question now we have a little bit of a longer question so let's get to it uh, sorry right here uh, i had a successful implantation pregnancy stopped surprisingly week five i was told in the week seven eight that pregnancy stopped growing and no heartbeat detected it was a 3bb embryo i am 39 my husband is 59 non-smokers both and generally health no genetic issues we were tested for over 700 genes plus the couple carried type was normal. I was told that my endometrium is fine except for a couple of myomas, uh, but nothing that could prevent pregnancy from evolving. And there is actually a follow-up. So let me simply show you once. Uh, I... I understand that uh, we are speaking about the treatment with own eggs, right? Uh, just give me a second. Okay. It's um, right here. I, it is the follow-up question. So if this is the case, because the, the karyotype of the couple and so on, these this are underrightly uh, 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 features of a, of a cycle with own X, then I have to come back to my first uh, uh, sentence where I said 80% of the implantation and also of, of, of the capability of uh, maintaining a pregnancy depends on the embryo quality. And the embryo quality depends on the egg quality in terms of maternal age. With uh, 39 or 40, we know that the percentage of uh, blastocysts, not of embryos, this would be even higher, of blastocysts that have the wrong chromosomic uh, uh, formula is uh, between 70 and 80 percent so the most probable explanation for uh, the case uh, this patient is uh, describing is that this embryo was an euploid because an embryos as i told 
before even do not implant or if they implant they stop growing very early mm -hmm. okay thank you so much for that um yes that was on x of course the patient has uh, added this right here and also um she just added here, like, I must specify that this is a follow-up uh, I was mentioning before. I must specify that was a frozen embryo transfer. Might this have damaged the embryo? Could this have been the issue of pregnancy stopped to evolve? Absolutely not. Uh, freezing of embryos is, uh, is a technology that is... Uh, known since 20 years that has, have got improved during the, the last decades in a way that uh, uh, frozen embryos are even not uh, uh, weaker than fresh embryos. Maybe, and now I will say something which is shocking, maybe they behave stronger as uh, fresh embryos. Mm -hmm. We don't know why, but if you compare fresh transfers with uh, frozen transfers uh, in substituted cycles, yeah, this is not the same as in a natural cycle, in substituted cycle, which is the main type of cycle that egg donation patients have, then the, there is uh, no uh, measurable benefit of transferring the embryos in fresh. Even there is a slight uh, improvement of the implantation if they are transferred uh, uh, frozen. Obviously, uh, taking into account that everything went fine and there was no accident in freezing or defreezing of that embryo. Yeah, if current technology with current re re reliability and accuracy could uh, uh, be applied, then there is there is no damage of the of the embryo. And maybe the improvement is very small. It's, it's not statistically so significant, and we are not sure it will, this could get confirmed in, in, in a higher uh, series. But uh, one of the possible explanations for that is that the freezing process puts nearly 200 uh, cells of, uh, of uh, an embryo under shock. And then the clock of the, of the uh, growth of their cell division patterns yeah which is which is called the cell cycle gets aligned and at the end when they arrive then for the transfer and have to start the, this dialogue with the endometrium there are more cells giving out these triggering signals uh, at the same time uh, that uh, that in fresh so this could be an explanation but it's hypothetically but for sure, I can only uh, remark there is no damage. If there was no accident, there is no damage by freezing blastocyst, vitrif vitrifying blastocyst. Yeah. So this, okay. this applies only for the vitrification technology. All right. Thank you so much for clarifying this to us. And there is another question from uh, the patient. OK, so uh, we want to do an IVF again with own cells. My question at what stage from day one, day five, lastosis, can you tell if this the, if this is the man or the woman that affects negatively the genetic material of moral and thus failing to develop into a good blastocyst? Would a double cultivation test of my oocytes with partner sperm as well as donor sperm be an effective way to identify this? Yes, to the last question for sure, because this would uh, uh, be like uh, an uh, essay that compares uh, only uh, one uh, differing parameter. If all the rest of the parameters, the same cycle, the same X, the same woman, if uh, the same clinic, the same retrieval, the same lab, and you only exchange the one factor, which is the sperm source, then you would have very clearly uh, shown up the differences that uh, that are applied by, by those factors. But uh, having said that, uh, 59 uh, years of uh, age of uh, your husband are more related to epigenetic uh, activation failures of, of the embryos than, uh, than uh, uh, the appearance of the blastocyst. Uh, they are related to the blastocyst rate uh, uh, more than in the first uh, three days of development because in the first three days, everything which happens, happens driven by the egg, everything. 
after that, we call it zygotic activation, then the embryo has to read their own genes and activate their own uh, replication machinery autologously. And then, obviously, the father counts. Before, it didn't count just for the uh, fertilization and uh, nothing else. But uh, the blastocyst rate, uh, where the impact of the, of the male sperm is evident, uh, could be checked in a way like uh, you proposed, uh, comparing it uh, with uh, the same cohort of embryos with another sperm. Or if you can't do that because you will not have so many uh, eggs, uh, probably uh, to waste them in uh, uh, in this way, uh, and uh, and possibly your husband is uh, still interested in uh, in uh, having his uh, sperm uh, being used in uh, in in your common project. Uh, what I would uh, recommend to you is is to make PGS with your sperm, with your husband's sperm, in a way that you could accumulate so many embryos as uh, needed until uh, some of them can be detected as being genetically normal. Then also take care on the implantation window and then other possible uh, uh, implantation uh, failure sources, because these one or two embryos that you could generate uh, in the next months, they are like uh, gold. Uh, and you should not uh, transfer them before knowing exactly what is happening also on the site of the endometrium. But uh, going for that reason now for, for sperm donation is something I would not recommend. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much again for your question and for um, your recommendation as well. There's another question here. Is proclampsia an instance for failed immunological response you talked about? Very good question. Yes, this is extremely linked. Preeclampsia is two to three times more often in egg donation cases. And uh, there, are, there was a lot of debate why this is that way. And this has to do with what I explained before. The hemiallogenic embryo and the uh, allogenic embryo uh, behave differently because they uh, trigger different responses of the immune environment and uh, they, they, they open a different immune tolerance pathway, which allows the embryos from egg donation possibly in the placentation time to go a little bit deeper uh, and to attach to the lower uh, levels of, of, of the later on called placenta in a way that the blood supply is different, in a way that there could be some restrictions for once the placenta grows for providing enough blood flow and this is one of the reasons for for the preeclampsia if the fetus does not get enough nutrients the way to compensate that is increasing the blood pressure of the mother and uh, once these vessels are under such big high pressure the time comes where they are insufficient they cannot uh, supply enough and this is uh, why preeclampsias led to to premature deliveries and this is and this is a risk associated with the immunological response in the very 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 early stages of implantation yeah so this this happens during the first three four days of implantation and this is why we, there are also thoughts using regenerative medicine or this immune modulation or this immunological resetting of the endometrium to to allow uh, this not to be so prevalent and another issue is also the cure hla uh, analogy so the genetic matching in in cases of uh, of uh, uh, egg donation we expect that aligning the hla typology of the donor to that of the mother then the implantation will happen as in an hemiallogenic way and then the depth of implantation will not be the same and may, hopefully this will then eliminate the higher risk for preeclampsia that uh, 
uh, egg donation patients have. Mm -hmm. There's actually a follow-up in chat, such case, just wanted you to see, are there tests to prevent preeclampsia or medication? A test? No, no. Uh, okay, the only, only, only one I would say is the, is the genetic matching. So if we are talking about uh, uh, the, the uh, neck donation cycle, then genetic matching would help to prevent that. And then there are also immune modulatory drugs that could help to, to, to make this impact uh, uh, a little bit uh, weaker. I think that has been tried with uh, corticoids, yeah, but it's very difficult to measure that. Uh, but okay. uh, but a test to diagnose that uh, in advance is unfortunately not uh, available. Uh, in a, in a, a biopsy for the receptivity testing, yeah, uh, we can theoretically also address some of the mechanisms in the blood flow uh, formation and, and so on that could contribute to the preeclampsia. We could just define if the patient has a higher risk, but this will not help us in uh, influencing that risk. Okay. Uh, it is known that there are some patients that have a congenital higher risk for preeclampsia, yeah, because some of these mechanisms, not only the immune ones, some of the blood vessel creation mechanisms are also impaired. They, and this is something which is inborn, and this will get repeated every time. Making a lot of efforts, you could address some of these molecules, but this will not help because there is no medication for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for um, answering this uh, question as well. And now uh, let me go to the next one. I usually get maximum of five eggs retrieved. Does it make sense to do PGS testing? How about if I do, if I go for egg donor and have 10, 12 eggs from donor, should I do PGS just in case or it's low chance to get abnormalities? Uh, the chance is low with egg uh, donation from 12 eggs. Imagine 10 can be fertilized. And uh, then from the fertilized in humans, the blastocyst rate is 40 to 60%. Imagine five uh, blastocysts could arise from that. Uh, if you can assume the risk that at least one of them will be uh, genetically abnormal, if you are a little bit unlucky, it could be two of five, yeah, which is which is uh, then uh, substantially more. If you can live with a situation that the most probable scenario is that the, the, the healthy ones will implant and the unhealthy ones will even do not implant, if you can live with a possible failed transfer, which can happen also for many other reasons, then uh, this is not uh, justified to, to, to analyze that. If you take into account what we mentioned before, the costs of the PGS and the cost of the cryotransfers and the lost time and so on, it could be also an, an, a, an, a financial decision. Uh, and, and, and also for, 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 your, for your mental uh, uh, relaxation. Uh, but if you work with your own eggs and you only get maximum five eggs, I suppose you are between uh, 37 and 39 uh, years old or, or even more. So if you are already at the, that uh, age group, then PGS testing is mandatory, in my opinion. Okay, thank you so much for... Uh, answering that, I'm just waiting because uh, it's possible that uh, the patient is uh, typing something. Uh, so I just wanted to wait, but uh, not at this point. So we will go back if we receive something. <laughs> okay. And now let's go ahead with the next question. So how can I be a real mother even if I'm not a biological one? Well, I don't understand that question. I believe it's about the egg donation, yes, so like... But the egg donation mother is the biological mother. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, so just here, here we have a, a quite uh, usual confusion of concepts. Mm -hmm. Real mother is the one uh, uh, that uh, also in cases of adoptions uh, 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 takes the rule of uh, being mother. This is a real mother. And the biological mother is the one that uh, uh, carries out a pregnancy and a delivery. And the genetic mother is the one that provides the egg. Mm -hmm. So if okay. you perform egg donation, you will be the real mother and you will be the biological mother. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, well, if you would like to add anything, uh, I mean, to the patient, of course, uh, just uh, go ahead and uh, let oh, us know. Yeah, yeah. She's, Perfect. It's, it's a wrong approach. She, she will need to, 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 to have a better explained what are the differences between mm -hmm. egg donation and uh, own uh, egg treatments. Understood perfectly. Thank you so much. And let's go to the next question we are having right here. I have had two PGS tested normal embryos transferred, but neither resulted in a pregnancy. I have had three IVF pregnancies, which resulted in a miscarriage. I have had an ERA biopsy, which was receptive. What steps would you suggest to take next? Okay, if the receptivity is proven, if uh, uh, PGS tested embryos uh, are proven, then you have covered more than 80% of most uh, popular implantation failure reasons. What uh, uh, still keeps uh, not uh, studied is the immunology, I would say. So if this is a, a, a treatment with own eggs, uh, then you don't need to, to check for the cure HLA or maybe the cure HLA of your husband. Uh, but uh, to take a biopsy of your endometrium and to uh, uh, evaluate uh, the balance of forces between aggressive and non-aggressive cells uh, could be a, a key for that. Uh, because obviously there is something serious happening behind that. The three IVF pregnancies with miscarriage are also an indication of uh, some kind of uh, immunologic uh, problems. And, uh, and two PGS te tested embryos are quite evident, yeah, that uh, there is something behind receptivity and behind genetics. And this could be something anatomically. I would recommend to you also an hysteroscopy to check that, the, that you don't have any blood supply deficiencies. I would recommend to you this three-dimensional uh, power Doppler examination to, to check the, the, the uh, flow index of, of your subendometrial vessels. And I would check in your uh, situation also the, the immunology and the chronic infections before going for the next transfer, for sure. And perfect. Thank you so much again for answering this question. Now we are having another longer question, so let's have a look at it. I'm 40, uh, 45 and had nine old eggs IVF cycles previously and all very good quality embryos from which I had implantation only once, but this ended at miscarriage. Due to age, we moved to donor eggs last year and got six very good quality embryos, which we froze. I've had two embryo transfers from the donor cycle, uh, but uh, both failed. In the past, I've had ERA, hysteroscopies, basic Chicago blood test, EMA tests, but nothing major showed up. We have four donor eggs. Embryos on ice. It seems implantation may be the issue. Should I have any other tests before doing another transfer? And the donor sure. proven, the patient also added. For sure. It's a bit like uh, the last patient uh, because uh, the genetic uh, reason for implantation failure explains the the nine own uh, IVF cycles between 39 and 45, for sure. Now, having uh, opened the, the, new, the new era of, uh, of uh, egg donation, uh, six good quality embryos, uh, where two have been transferred, um, 
with uh, receptivity tests, hysteroscopies, and so on. What I miss here again is the immunology. Uh, was your your donor uh, matched genetically in terms of HLA and KIR? Um, have you done uh, immunologic mapping of your endometrium? Have you used any kind of immune modulation before? Uh, and uh, I would start with that. And if uh, 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 still all the other four embryos do not uh, implant or get implanted and miscarriage, uh, then maybe you have a more paracrine problem, which could be related to, to age also, and where this regenerative medicine approach or rejuvenation of the tissues, resetting of all the, the, the stem cells and of all the growth factors, uh, maybe could be helpful for you too. But having had only two embryos transferred after receptivity test and without immunologic testing, I would first start with immunological testing, immunological modulatory therapy, try the four embryos that you still have uh, in the hope that one of them will succeed. And if not, then go for regenerative medicine. Thank you so much for that. There is a follow-up question, okay? So let me show you this one uh, straight away. Uh, could it be my partner's sperm? His sperm tests are fine, including DNA fragmentation. My current clinic says there could be hidden sperm issues. Yeah. Uh, this was the patient of, yes, from the which, of which question? Uh, sorry, let me show you this one from the very previous uh, question, which is right here. Ah, this one, the last yes. one. Yes, mm -hmm. the last one. Uh, this could be an issue uh, for the part uh, of the egg donation uh, uh, cycles. This could be an issue. Uh, 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 but uh, but uh, uh, at the end, uh, as I mentioned before, what the sperm contributes to the embryo quality is 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 very small. Uh, what you could do is perform PGS on these four frozen embryos, and and don't don't be afraid. The, Usually, it's possible to defreeze them, take a biopsy, and freeze them again. Embryos do not suffer about uh, 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 freezing and defreezing uh, if it's less than 20 times. So it will only be two times. Uh, and then you would know more about the, the, the genetics of the embryo. And if, uh, despite of uh, using uh, donor eggs, you can detect... Uh, uh, certain chromosomic abnormalities in those embryos, for example, in sexual chromosomes that are usually very linked to, to, to sperm uh, uh, discapacity, then, then, uh, then you would have a reason to believe that uh, there is something wrong with the sperm. But as long as your husband is healthy, he has a normal fragmentation, he has a normal sperm count, uh, the reason will rely much more on the quality of the egg. As I mentioned before, 80% of the embryo quality depends on the quality of the egg. Go sure that, they, that, that, that the embryos are really so good. Uh, do, do possibly a PGS on them, but uh, please don't, don't let your husband uh, fall. Uh, uh, as long as you can uh, fix the possible reasons for the immune in, in, uh, in the immunology for the implantation failure, as long as you still have for for good embryos, and as long as uh, uh, life is there, you should have hope. Uh, don't think too early about exchanging your sper your uh, husband's sperm. Uh, with uh, donate, donated sperm, because it's fantastic if you have a children that is genetically from your 
husband and this uh, biologically from you. Uh, this is a quite balanced situation that we always give preference. Don't change too early to embryo donation. Okay, perfect. Thank you for uh, that advice uh, as well. And uh, let me go to the next question that we have. Should I have been taking estrogen and progesterone during gestation after fourth month? I, they could not hear heartbeat. I started to swell a little. I had miscarriage when they told me to stop progesterone. They said it was growing. What could I have done? After fourth month? Uh, no. The recommendations mm -hmm. are up to the 12th week, uh, which is uh, already uh, with a quite uh, big security zone because the embryo uh, and the uh, early implantation starts the placentation quite early. And uh, the hormonal supply that you need to take in a substituted cycle uh, usually you, which represents the hormones that usually are uh, generated by the luteal body but in this case if you don't have an ovulation you don't have a luteal body and you have to substitute them there are a lot of evidence that the placenta the early placenta from the 10th week of pregnancy can already uh, uh, create uh, all the uh, hormones that the later pregnancy needs autonomously. So if we give two uh, extension uh, additional uh, weeks of external uh, hormones, this is what I mean with security area. But uh, you can stop in all cases the supplementation of the substitution of those hormones beyond the uh, 12th week of pregnancy. You don't need to keep this until the fourth month of pregnancy, this makes absolutely no sense. So if there is something wrong with the placenta that uh, it is not able to create uh, by itself these hormones, uh, then there is something so intrinsically wrong with the placenta that it possibly will not sustain the whole pregnancy uh, very long. But this is quite unusual because all uh, miscarriages happen before the 12th week of pregnancy. After that, if this placenta uh, empowerment has happened, uh, there are as good as no uh, uh, miscarriages any longer. Maybe there are infections or there are uh, premature intrauterine deaths or, or other complications of the uh, second part of the of the pregnancy, but uh, miscarriages uh, is very rare. Thank you again so much uh, for answering that one. Now we have two very same questions. So, does the window of implantation change from cycle to cycle, or is it pretty much fixed? Good question. It is uh, pretty much max uh, fixed, but. It can, uh, because this is like an individual fingerprint, uh, but it can change. What we have measured is uh, after uh, operations of the uterus, after removing the whole endometrium, for example, in an aggressive uh, curettage, after an abortion or after an infection or, or or, or after a delivery with the placenta attached to the uterus and you have to aggressively remove these residual tissues, this uh, may change after that. And, uh, and it may change also after deliveries. Yeah, this is, this is why we only perform a second uh, receptivity test if in the time between there was uh, an event like delivery or an event like uh, 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 surgery or aggressive abrasio of the uterus. Other, other, in other cases, not. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. We now have a bit of a longer question again, so let's get to it. I have done the ERA test twice. First time was pre-receptive. Second time was post-receptive. It was that suggested that the window of implantation is between the two. I understand that the protocol needs to be the same in order for the result to be applicable. Does this mean that the dosage of the medication needs to be exactly the same? Like if I took a higher dose of progesterone, 
or a different method, uh, does this mean the result won't be valid or does it not matter? Very good question. It matters. It matters a lot. It's not only about time, it's also about um, bioavailability of the drugs. Yeah. We always perform in uh, when we transfer also a serum uh, level of progesterone because the same dose uh, uh, of usually vaginal pessaries of micronized progesterone that has to go inside uh, uh, small fat uh, balls into the blood and so on. So the biokinetics and the pharmacokinetics and the bioavailability of the drugs, drugs may change a lot between patients. And once you have defined your window of implantation with a certain time and with a certain dose, then you should not leave this scheme because changing times or doses may change everything. So it's a very, very good question. This is why it is better to perform a progesterone level in blood under the standard progesterone level during the time of the, of the uh, receptivity testing in order to know if the bioavailability of this drug is normal in your case or not. Because if you need to increase the doses to have at least 9 to 12 uh, picogram per milliliter of progesterone in your blood to the time of the, of the transfer, then you should know this before taking conclusions from the receptivity test. Mm -hmm. Very good okay. question. Perfect. Thank you so much for answering this one. We will be slowly finishing, okay? But of course, uh, any questions that will not be answered uh, during our live event, we will simply pour forward to the team IVF Spain and of course, uh, Dr. Yon. Uh, so they will get back to you, okay? This is just to let you know, so you are not uh, worried <laughs> that you your question will be missed. Um, there's another question right here. Okay, sorry, here it is. Taking a biopsy of the endometrium, how much time to recover does the woman need from this stage until the next IVF if the issue is detected? No, no, there is no delay in the IVF. It's the opposite. The biopsy of the endometrium is very easy. You can uh, perform that without uh, any sedation, without any... Uh, OP theater or, or or so this is this is something that you can perform in the normal consultation room. Uh, it's not comfortable, but it's not painful. Uh, and uh, once you have uh, scratched a bit of the endometrium, uh, what maybe you have heard also about the the scratching procedures or or that woman uh, have a tendency to get more pregnant after an abrasio or after manipulation of the uterus or even after hysteroscopy. And this effect lasts only for two to three months. Uh, the explanation for that is that the, that the uh, manipulation of the inner part of the uterus creates a kind of inflammation, of local inflammation, that helps uh, aligning properly the immunologic and the paracrine uh, uh, ways. This is why even in the 18th century, everybody, or the, in the 19th century, everybody knew an operated uterus is more suitable to get pregnant in the next cycle as uh, without uh, manipulation. So this is something you can read in the, in the medicine history uh, books. And the same effect you, you could profit from uh, the biopsy, because the biopsy is uh, uh, irritation and an uh, provokes a, an inflammation, which positive effect on the implantation you can take for the next, let's say, two months. So after the biopsy of endometrium, carry on with the IVF as short as possible. Okay. Thank you so much again. And I just wanted to go back to the previous question, okay? Um, to this question. Uh, the patient. Mr. Caroline, I, I see here uh, one patient is asking mm -hmm. uh, if it's possible to have a personal online consultation yes. with me. 
Yes, so as well. I, I, I also want to, to, to comment on the current situation with the COVID crisis okay. and, uh, and uh, all this. Uh, we are now reinforcing our, our uh, online presence and, and for sure they can take contact with us and we can make uh, uh, for free short consultations for all patients that have attended this, this uh, event. Perfect. Sounds perfect, of course. And uh, so just uh, just if you could take a look, the patient has asked uh, this, the previous one, my P4 level was only five uh, on the monitoring of ERA biopsy. Uh, so was this too low? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's preferable to have it uh, above eight and it's optimal to have it above 10. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, she, she, should, she should possibly benefit from not only micronized uh, progesterone, there is, there is also water-soluble pro progesterone injections uh, available, not in all countries in Europe, but in most. Okay, understood. Thank you so much. Okay, and of course, I just wanted to remind everyone that if you would like to get in touch with uh, IVF Spain, Dr. Yon and his team, you can use this link right here. All your, uh, you can ask your questions through using this uh, link actually, and all your questions or your requests will be sent to the clinic directly and they will get back to you shortly. And as you know, you will also have a chance to get an online consultation, free online consultation with Dr. Yon. So uh, go ahead and, and do it. But I also want to assure you that we will forward all the questions that hasn't been answered tonight uh, to, the, to the team. So they will definitely get back to you, Dr. Yon. I'm sure we'll be also happy to to assist you. We will finish for tonight. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining our event. Thank you for so many questions, Dr. Yon. It has been a pleasure. Thank you for your Thank time you. and for all the details. Yeah. It definitely was uh, very, very interesting. And of course, there are already some shout outs right here uh, so thank you for your comments and well thank you for the comments of the patients too yeah a exactly. pleasure yeah it's my mission to to use my knowledge with uh, people like you perfect exactly as you can see only I, I, positive i, I, I can't do uh, uh, other things but this <laughs> i can <laughs> Yes, well, it's as you can see, um, there's only positive comments right here. So, um, well, I can only say thank you. And, uh, well, I, there's nothing else to add, really. You can see okay. it for yourself. <laughs> yes, so, thank you. So thank you so much. Uh, and of course, we will be here uh, in 30 minutes, less than 30 minutes. We are having another event at 8 p.m. UK time. So you can um, feel free to join us as well. And well, once again, thank you so much. Um, bye -bye. Take care keep, and have a lovely safe. evening. Exactly. Bye. Stay safe. Bye.